um, in many respects, what you might say, a, a seam of gold, silver mineralization. Uh, what I mean by that is that if you look historically around the world, and particularly the U.S., the Coeur d'Alene district back in the silver days, the Bonanza silver days, they found veins. And, and when you think about old time mining, you have a picture in your mind of being underground, closed in, where there's a seam of white material on the wall with gold through it. We have veins all around the world, um, but the vein is typically something that's relatively narrow and might go for distances of 1,000 feet to 5,000 feet, sometimes 10,000 feet in length. And they generally have a fairly long vertical dimension. And a vein forms from having a fault, a geological fault within the earth, and where the gold-bearing fluids or silver or base metals come up through and, and, and precipitate on that fault structure. So they're long, narrow, and typically fairly high grade. There's what we call high sulfidation veins, low sulfidation veins, but typically veins can differ in that some can be very high in, say, copper lead zinc and have no gold silver, and other ones might be very high in gold, and other ones simply might be high in silver. The ones in Argentina, in southern Argentina, where extore are, they're called epithermal, low sulfidation epithermal veins, again, fairly narrow in the order of seven to ten feet wide. They can go for a long way. They can That structure can go for a mile or so, sometimes two miles in length. But in those veins, there you have copper lead zinc in small amounts. In minerals we call calcopyrite, sphalerite, galena. These are sulfide minerals. And the gold comes in later. And in this particular sample I have here, the gold is visible and the silver is visible. So when you drill these cores through, you can actually see the minerals. So think high grade, concentrated within fairly narrow zones, not dispersed into the other kinds of things that we call porphyries, for example.